We are here for our sixth annual food drive today, and I'm so proud of the amount of donations that we've received already today. My father was killed one week before the war ended. Never came back. The Poles came and they said, you have 20 minutes to leave. If you don't leave in 20 minutes, you will all be shot. My mother had four boys. I was the second one. The youngest one was two days old. Uh, sometimes we had to survive just on regular grass for days. There was no food, there was nothing. There is this American soldier and he gives me part of a sandwich. What's happened? And my mother uh, was the one who was the savior for all of us. Because if you have four kids, <clears throat> and everybody wants something to eat and nobody gets anything because there is nothing there, then you have to make the decision. Do I go on or do I go in the river with everybody? A lot of people went into the rivers and just died. And we couldn't swim, so we all have all died. But my mother took a different avenue and said, no matter what it takes, I'm gonna go that avenue. My, my mother received a letter from Werner's mother, I believe it was 1946 or 47, and it was a, actually was addressed to my dad, but it was addressed to a different address. And my mother sent it back, she said, no, this isn't, doesn't belong to us. The letter came again, she sent it back once more, and then it came one third time, and she opened it then, and it was a letter from Werner's mother, asking for help. They were refugees after the war in, in Europe, in Germany. And she started to send them packages of numerous items. And that's continued for many years, probably six years. And they became very good friends. They never met each other, but they stayed in contact with through the mail. And it's, it was something that was near and dear to my parents' heart to send this. And actually we had some of my aunts and uncles actually contributed too. Oh, it was very important for me <laughs> to see my uh, savers who saved us. Werner came to this country in 1968 and he came to visit us at our farm. And it was quite interesting to meet him at that time. I was quite young then. When I came to them, it was 1968, and my English was very limited. And uh, of course, I thanked them. I was very happy to see them and to meet them, finally. And uh, they welcomed me with full arms, open arms. At that time, uh, Mrs. Radke was still alive, Marcella Radke, and then James Radke. He was the youngest, I assume. And there were three daughters. And I remember them very well when they took me out the first time for a rodeo, I never saw a rodeo. We could tell that he was very, very grateful for everything that we had sent to him and his family. Uh, we knew at that time that he was very sincere. Uh, we know that a lot of other people sent care packages too, but we don't. This is one that went out of his way to come and meet us. We thought that was very special. Uh, he stayed in touch with my family, my mother, my sisters, and us um, for many years now, and we've we've come to know him. He's visited visited Wisconsin, I believe, three or four times, and uh, this is our second trip down to Florida to see him. We're here today to help out with the food drive. We met Fran a couple of years ago doing a lot of wonderful things here. We have over $2,000 in cash donations plus an entire trailer full of food today. I am just absolutely amazed by the generosity of people, how much they've reached out to help others in our community. And if it wasn't for the generosity and compassion of the Rodka family, who is not really our family, but they are from America, sending the care packages to save my grandmother, I would not be here today. My grandmother would tell me about the spam. That was her favorite thing. <laughs> the spam and the coffee. Sometimes they would get burlap sacks. She could make clothes for the boys out of it. She told me that all four boys never had shoes at the same time. 
so she could make a pair of shoes and they could use them at different times to go outside. And They have both taught me my entire life how important it is to be generous to those, even people that you don't know. And even the small amounts that you can give can make a huge difference in someone's lives, really. My father was always so generous growing up and I didn't really understand the whole backstory at that time. He would go find homeless people at Thanksgiving, always gave turkeys to all of his employees. He's the most generous person to a homeless man on the side of the road. It was hard for me to understand at that time as being a five-year-old, but the more time I spent with my grandmother and she told me the stories of what they had been through, so easy for me to understand. And that is the whole reason that we're here today. It's so, so important for me to give back just a little bit. Fran is, she's such an icon. She is uh, someone that we all look up to and admire because she gives back so much. Anybody who needs help anytime, children, families, veterans, animals, she's always there to go above and beyond. She sponsors more events and does more things and I think she honestly gives more than she takes home. I would venture to say that. She's the most generous heart. Anybody that genuinely needs her, she's there to support. We've gotten to know Werner's daughter Fran in the law office here and she's told me that she's inspired by what my parents had done for for their family and quite frankly we're quite inspired by what she's doing for everybody else. I can't tell you how happy it makes me today. I woke up with a huge smile on my face knowing that this was going to be this wonderful day that we can give back and make a difference in someone's life. And I was really hoping to have this amazing food drive, but I had no idea it was going to be as successful as it is today. I really am looking forward to Saturday unloading the food with our children so that we can make sure to show them how important it is to continue to do this. And I want our boys to continue the legacy of Al-Mahash and the Radka family to change lives.